This week, Gloucester stunned Sarries at the Stonex. Bath finally get a win, and Leicester finally lose. Oh, and Marcus Smith is a magician. All that and lots, lots more on this week's episode of Gallagher Premiership Rugby's The Lowdown. Welcome back to The Lowdown. Um, as you can see, I've swapped spots again. I'm not in Bath. I'm at the Fuller's Brewery in Chiswick. Uh, freshest pint of London Pride in London, I'm told. They didn't say the best, they said the freshest. It might be the best. I mean, it is made about three and a half feet that way, so it really ought to be good. If it's not good here, it's not going to be good anywhere. Um, big weekend in the Gallagher Prem, some really big results, cracking weekends action. But before we get to that, a couple of bits and pieces. Wayne Barnes uh, celebrated, or rather refereed, his 250th Premiership game on Friday night. And using the same whistle, the old Acme Thunderer, that's never let him down in the previous 249 Premiership games. And he was brilliant. Best referee, Wayne Barnes. Not the words of me, the words of Wayne Barnes. Um, Agustin Creevy, definitely one of the world's best hookers. Uh, not only does he look exactly like Leonardo DiCaprio, when I first saw him, I thought it was him. He's now behaving like Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, great news for London Irish, great news for all of us who get to watch him still. Uh, one of the greats, a uh, big fan of his myself. And it got me thinking, in terms of overseas signings, who is the best ever to land in the Premiership? Francois Pienaar, Philippe Contepomi, I can't think of any now, I'm on the spot, there'll be loads. Skulk Brits, I mean Skulk Brits, Skulk Brits is the winner. Skulk Brits definitely is the one, but if you've got any ideas other than Skulk Brits, or if you want to tell me I'm right in saying Skulk Brits, do sort of get in the comments and let me know. But the answer is Skulk Brits. Uh, right, let's get down to rugby and let's indeed go to Ashton Gate on Friday night to watch the Wayne Barnes show. It was actually a really sharp start from Sale. Uh, AJ McGinty causing problems, cutting shapes in the midfield. Isn't he in good form? I like that little toe poke from Jacquea. Why not? Counts as a pass. Lovely involvement from Marlon Yard. Beautifully finished by Jonas Ashman. He's in lovely form as well. Um, really interesting player to keep an eye on. But it sort of didn't go much further for Sale Sharks. There are a couple of errors that really shouldn't happen at this level, it has to be said. And it put them bang in trouble. You look at Morahan coming inside there. Rob Dupree has really got to make that tackle. There's no two ways about it. And it happened again. It happened again in the 13 channel with Rob Dupree. So I think that, that needs sorting out because if you can see two tries that easily, you're always going to be in trouble. That pass from Luke James, I was going to call it an offload. It's not an offload for Dupree to go in, arguably to make up for that first missed tackle. But how about this? That's not an offload. That is a pass and it is a thing of beauty. Really, really high level of skill. Bristol did look slightly sort of they were approaching the Bristol Bears we all knew and loved last season. Semi Randrangel wasn't on top form. That pass inside could have been forward, probably was forward, but it's flat enough that we should probably all move on and get on with our lives. But Yoan Lloyd was on the field, and that meant that something exciting could always happen. This was a wonderful bit of skill from Yoan Lloyd. The footwork, the power, the confidence and the skill to get that pass away. I just love watching him. I like watching him at fullback. I like watching him on the wing. I'd quite like to see him play a bit more fly half. I think he's a fabulous talent, loads of power. This is obviously late on, games in the red. How about that? Uh, and on social media after that game, Mark Johnson said, absolutely fantastic. Couldn't be there tonight, presume he's a Bristol fan. Uh, but scream when we went over for the final try. Such effort from the lads over the last few weeks with no reward. Tonight, the scales leveled up. Come on, Briss. Um, interesting one here from Marcus Watts on Twitter. One thing I noticed on Twitter, he said last night, was how there was a lot of criticism of the referee. Maybe, just maybe, last night the Bears got the rub of the green on a couple of decisions. Based on the last three weeks, it just shows how important these marginal decisions are. Yeah, Marcus, I, I see your point, mate. But actually, if you think about a couple of tries that were such a couple of fingertip jobs, weren't they, that were disallowed for sale, that can change a game. And that's no one's fault, that's just the way it goes. But it's tiny little margins. And you think about the couple of missed tackles in the 13 channel that just allowed Bristol players to ghost through from sale sharks. And really, they're the easiest tries those guys will ever score. Suddenly, you make those tackles, those fingertips become whole fingers and the ball doesn't get knocked on. Suddenly, you've got a completely different game. So I do think... If you're blaming the ref, there will have been decision, decisions from Wayne Barnes, probably in every game he's ever refereed that weren't quite accurate, because that's what happens with human beings. Can't be consistent. It just doesn't work like that. You can't be entirely consistent. So I think if you're going to blame the ref for that, you're probably looking in the wrong place. Uh, anyway, up to Newcastle, all the way to Newcastle, where they took on the Northampton Saints. 
Now, we are going to talk quite a lot about Northampton's attack. We're going to see a bit of it, and it was wonderful. But their defence looked decent too. This is my favourite of the collisions from the day. Joel Hodgson getting absolutely mullered by Fraser Dingwall. To be fair, it was quite an easy shot to make, but you still want to go and clatter the bloke. Good to watch, as long as no one gets hurt. Tom Collins streaking in, always looks good. Just Tom Collins just always looks good when he plays for Northampton Saints. Always a threat, as is this guy at the moment, playing some lovely stuff. Sam Matavesi, that's a hooker, by the way. Skosan on his right. Courtney Skosan scored 10 from 10. Who else would you want on your right-hand side more than him? Maybe Lewis Rees Samit at the moment. Do you know what? Maybe nobody more than him. Cracking finisher, but the, the work really was done by Matavesi. It was two steps. He steps inside Luther Burrell and Kyle Cooper's overshot it. So he sort of does a two with one. It's a beauty, nice bit of acceleration, easy pass. But how often do we see those go to the floor when it's a front rower chucking it? Lovely stuff. And this is a really nice way to finish. George Furbank, just a lovely rugby player. Carves them straight through the middle again. James is onside, on the inside, but just a beautiful bit of play from a lovely rugby player, George Furbank. Nice to see a top athlete in full flight like that. Beautiful stuff. And Newcastle ultimately were hammered. And on the socials, Andrew Hunkin said, fabulous bonus point win on the road. Absolutely perfect. Thank you for all your hard work. Terrific performance. Saints fan, very happy indeed. And Jeep1970 said, I thought we were just flat today. No spark. More like a last game of the season with nothing to play for. Sorry, chaps but you were just well beaten by a team who wanted it more. The wanting it more thing, I never quite I never quite buy into that. If you tested the lads' heart rates and measured the old GPS, they would have been going flat out some days. I agree it did look flat. Newcastle did look flat. They can play some brilliant stuff. They played really well at Chiefs already this season, really well at Bath. They did look flat and Northampton Saints were absolutely bumping in attack. So yeah, it was kind of one-way traffic for lots of that game. Right, up to the Stonex where Saracens played Gloucester. And I know Gloucester are going well this season, but they couldn't beat Sarries, could they? Because it's Sarries, isn't it? How about this from a kickoff? Geordie Reid, if there was a Premiership team of the season named this week, I reckon he would be in there at blindside flanker. He's been absolutely fantastic. That's a brilliant offload off the deck. Singleton's playing really well too. Gloucester are just in a really good place, trying some nice stuff. This is Mark Atkinson, the 12 who can do it all. To British line, British and Irish line, Chris Harris. Just keeping Sarries guessing. All right, it's not leading to tries every time but it's just keeping defences guessing here's a second try of the match straight from the kickoff unusual Geordie Reid can't do a lot about that but get hammered backwards just a little bit of a concentration lapse here from Gloucester not much detail Chapman didn't have enough people in place to block McFarlane McFarlane profited good awareness from him bit slack from Gloucester game in the balance Adam Hastings who very very quickly well he's first choice fly off he's always going to be a pivotal figure but very, very quickly has looked comfortable running the ship for Gloucester. Of course, it helps having Mark Atkinson outside you. An outstanding rugby player and a decent asset. Here comes Lewington. Keep your eyes on him in those flashy white boots. It's not exactly a secret line. They advertise it. Didn't really shock anybody, but it's really nicely worked by Saris. They mixed up their line out nicely and just kept those guys at the tail. Just kept them guessing a little bit, which creates a bit of space towards the back there. Gloucester ultimately hang on. Alex Lozowski couldn't nail a conversion to win Sarries the match. Gloucester fighting, game in the red, clock in the red, get the win, absolutely exhausted but over the moon. That feels like a significant victory for Gloucester. Doesn't mean they're going to go on and win the league and it doesn't mean that it's all over for Sarries. I still think Sarries will be in the final or very close to it, but Gloucester might well be a top four team at this rate, loving their stuff. Right, on social, Andrew Jones said, hard lines lad, Sarries fan. Horrible conditions, Gloss hung in there and took their chances well. Plus, ref got that knock on wrong, it went backwards. Andrew, stop blaming the ref, mate. Stop blaming the ref. It doesn't work. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're not right. Never a good look, Chief. A Gloucester Rugby supporter podcast called Cherry Jam said, we haven't calmed down, we haven't calmed down. Biggest away win in years, and it wasn't even our best performance of the season. Hashtag Gloss family. Yeah, it doesn't have to be your best performance of the season does it it's just got to be good enough to beat the other lads and this weekend it was good enough really really good win now before we move on to the second half of the games we've got that little feature again you've got to name as many of your teammates as you can in 30 seconds last time we did Lewis Ludlam from Northampton Saints this time we're doing Lewis Ludlow from Gloucester is Ludlow right is the right one is Ludlow low Ludlow Val, Singo, Fraze, Ed, Bubba, Freddy, Jack, Jordy, uh, Aki, Hasto, Chris, Zam, Thorlo, 
Santi, Matty, the other Santi, uh, Jason, say Fraser, Kirill. I don't think we've got any more players, have we? Uh, Arthur. I'm out there. I wasn't expecting that, not from him. Really impressive player, impressive leader. That was poor, that was really, really poor. And he's, he's not only let himself down and his, and his family, but he's let the Gloucester family down as well. The hashtag Gloss, Gloss with a W family, he's let them all down. Um, anyway, uh, on to the rec. Could Bath get their first win of the season in all competitions? Well, sadly, the game began very early, as you can see, three and a half minutes in with a tackle from Rory Sutherland on his opposite number, Will Stewart, being investigated, being looked at in slow-mo. Keep your eye on white number one there. He does dip a bit, but he's basically heading up into the tackle. He's hitting low to high. It's face to face, therefore head to head. You just can't do that anymore. Such an important player for Worcester Warriors on a big day. Been out for so long, now he's back and he got a red card after a few minutes. So. I'm like you, I think to myself, red card, game over, what a shame. It wasn't game over, just like it wasn't game over at the stoop at the weekend. was more about that in a minute. But Worcester really made a game of it. Bath, I thought, weren't going to score this. I thought they were going to actually find a way not to score it. But Rock and Nguni had the feet and they got over. And you do think, is this where the floodgates open and Worcester capitulate because they're a man down? Well, absolutely none of that. Shilcock flying in. Bath, big holes in defence, really big. Remember, Worcester are a man down at this stage. This was delightful from Jonathan Joseph, who I thought was fantastic at the weekend for Bath. Now watch Jomo's face, watch his face. He doesn't think he scored it. He doesn't think he scored it, but actually he has scored it. It was a beautiful chip. He just about got it down without any separation. Really well finished, lovely bit of attacking play, but Worcester don't give in, they don't stop. Bear in mind, I remind you, a man down. <laughs> Space out on the right for Batley. He steams over, batters his way over, and they don't stop there. Lovely balls back inside to Simpson, who started the move. Bath undone again down the left or down the right, depending on what perspective, I suppose. This offload from Rockenden Gooney, you could say he got lucky with the deflection, but I think if the deflection wasn't there, it would have gone straight to De Glanville anyway. De Glanville, a class player, all the speed he needed to get around, and Bath made incredibly hard work of it against 14 man Worcester. But frankly, from their point of view, who cares? Finally, a win. Finally, finally. Social media, unsurprisingly, uh, pretty hectic after that win for Bath. Uh, Alex Beard said, delighted to see a win, but let's be real, 15 v 15, all game, and we easily lose that. To win only by three against a team, a man down the whole game is still worrying. I think, Alex, be positive, mate. Just enjoy your weekend, enjoy the win. And the thing is, if it's 15 v 15, both teams could have played differently. You don't know. You absolutely don't know, so we can't, we can't call that a fact, we can call it a guess. You might be right. Nonetheless, Bath won. Uh, Gareth Hanmer said this, well done to all Bath rugby. Horrendous season so far, but you still have the fans behind you. That's a nice message, Gareth. Well done to you. Keep it positive on social media. Uh, right, where are we going next? We're going to Wasps against Leicester. So Bath couldn't win all season and they won. Leicester couldn't lose all season and they, well, we'll find out. Now this is an interesting first try for Wasp. Well, it ends up being a penalty try. Nice and casual in backfield. Lots of Wasp players in front of the ball, most of them, but it does hit a Leicester fingertip, which means all the Wasp players are on side. They handle it really, really well. Keep your eye on Elliot Stoop, big second row. He might take a pass, he might take a pass, but he gets clattered before he gets a chance to receive a pass. It's by Tommy Raffel. Tackled off the ball is the decision that everybody wants to look at. Wasp barrel over, but ultimately they get held up. But the, the, the movement, the action that needs looking at is whether or not that was an early tackle and denied Elliot Stuka a chance of scoring. It was deemed to have been so, so that was a yellow card for Rafael. Penalty try. Julian Montoya burrows over. You won't see much here, but what you've got is a big bloke burrowing over from about a metre. Um, not terribly glamorous, but, you know, gets the job done, doesn't it? Now this is a little incident. Genge tries to clear out Hugard, can't manage it. Hugard gives him a little shove, saying have some of that, and Ellis Genge fires up big time. Flies over with a right hand, pulls the hair. Now lots of people are talking about gouging. I absolutely, my view, just my view, nothing like gouging. What he wanted to do was punch the bloke, but he opened his hand because he knew a punch is a definite red card. He absolutely flew off the handle. Pulling the hair was ridiculous. As soon as you slow it down, it looks worse. 
You need to see it at full speed. It's not gouging. He wants to punch, but he knows he can't. The hair pull is ridiculous, but for me, a yellow card was right. You might agree, you might not. It's okay to disagree. I think, actually, secretly, he was quite happy with a yellow over a red, to be honest with you. But it was a moment of madness from the captain. Frankly, it could have been worse. Jimmy Gopeth played very well. You could say he kept Wast in the game. He did better than that. He actually nudged them ahead. And the last five or 10 minutes of this match were just wonderful to watch. A brilliant advert for Gallagher Premiership Rugby. Breathless, looked absolutely exhausting. And Wasps held Leicester Tigers out for what felt, felt like, and what, well, it just was a monumental victory against the odds, massively depleted squad, against the so far unbeatable Tigers. Wonderful stuff in Coventry. Across the pitch, but they have stopped the Tiger roll. Again, social media went crazy after that one. Harry Latham Coyle, double barrel. Like it, like it. Do you wear a pinky ring, like a signet ring on your pinky with your family crest on it? I've always wanted a family crest. Um, Bath winning and Leicester losing. Gallagher Premiership in the twilight zone. Brilliant battling performance from Wasp to beat the league leaders. Um, and some random bint, her name is. I didn't call her that. It's what her name is on Twitter, called Re. Um, said, I'm not even a Wasp rugby fan, but that second half was incredible. Screamed myself hoarse those last five minutes, just hoping they could hold on. Massive congratulations on a brilliant win. Yeah, massive congratulations. And it was, again, that last 10 minutes. If you get over to Premiership Rugby TV, if you haven't seen the whole game, watch the whole game. If you haven't got enough time, just fast forward to the last 15, 20 minutes so you can get a bit of context before you hit the last 10 minutes, which were, apps. they just look knackering, apart from anything else. Right, to the stoop, Quinn's Chiefs. Well, a replay of last season's final was always going to be intense. The weather doesn't look it there. The weather was horrendous. Have a look at Stuart Hogg here. Does really well to strip the ball, but the ball drops right onto Luke Northmore's right boot, which means he can just tap it through for a bit of a run-in, bit of a sitter. Stuart Hogg actually did really good defensive work, but he would have been better off leaving it. Watch Danny Kerr. Just watch him. I know he gets clattered, but watch that pass, the no-look pass, sending Kenningham through. Absolutely outrageous. There are so many good scrum halves in the Gallagher Premiership at the moment. Danny Kerr's the best of the lot. I don't care what anyone says, he's the best of the lot. And Henry Slade gives that pass, stays alive. Joe Simmons looks up. Henry Slade's made up all that ground, scoots around the outside. Tyrone Green doesn't even see him coming. Complete shock line, brilliant work from Slade. He wasn't perfect, but he was good. Now this from Alec Hepburn, this was a, a key moment in the game. Sam, Sam Simmons is clearing out Joe Marler with one leg. Hepburn comes in on his other leg and you'll see what happens in the end. It's not pretty, it's not malicious, it's not intentional. But there's Hepburn on the left of your screen, picks up Marler, doesn't take enough care putting him down, takes him past the 90 degrees and all that. Red card. So game over, right? Well, wrong. Just like at the wreck, absolutely not game over. Exeter Chiefs were inspired. They were fantastic for the second half, although they were down to 14 men. Really, really good to watch. Northmore just does brilliantly, skates around Henry Slade here. Rare mistake from Henry Slade defensively in the 13 channel. Murley's away, Tyrone Green's away. Easy try, it's a four on one, and they cough it up. And that was almost the story of Quinn's day. There were, I think, four crossfield kicks from Marcus Smith. They were all the right option. They were all reasonably well executed. <laughs> but they only scored from one, you'll see why. And how about this from Marcus Smith? Just stitching boys up, just making it incredibly difficult for defenders to retain any sort of organisation, any sort of form. Just a wonderful talent. Horrible variety to play against, brilliant to play with. Ugo Monia tells me that Lewis Liner needed to not decelerate there and take that on the full. It's exactly what I would have done. I just wouldn't have slowed my feet up. Um, would have taken that. But that was crossfield kick number three that hadn't worked. But Marcus Smith would not be discouraged. This was perfect. Perfectly done. Andre Esterhazen unmarked, nice and wide to go in in the corner. Best player on the field on the day, Esterhazen. Keep an eye on him here. He's not quite in screen yet. Oh, there he is, just on the left. Keep your eye out. This is, of course, clock in the red, key moment. You could argue his hands are on the floor there first, and I think you'd be right, but it wasn't given. Ended up being a vital turnover, which ultimately secured Harlequins the win against 14-man Exeter. It was nothing like the final last June, nothing like it, but it was incredibly intense. And somehow, despite it being the conditions just being awful, virtually unplayable, it was a brilliant, brilliant contest. Well worth watching in full. On social media, uh, Killian Hickey said, uh, asked me to discuss Smith is better than Ford in this week's lowdown. Matter of opinion, uh, if I'm picking the England team, which I'm not, they're my two fly halves at the moment by a mile. 
I actually thought Joe Simmons was every bit as good as Marcus Smith at the weekend. Those amazing moments did belong to Marcus Smith as they so often do, but over the course of the 80, I thought Simmons was really, really good. Every, every bit as good as Marcus Smith. George Ford on the losing team in Coventry, still thought he was fantastic. His kicking game was really clever. Difficult one, it's all a matter of opinion. And the only opinion that matters is Eddie Jones's, and he seems to have, seems to have set his stall out there. The boys are bleak. That's not his comment, that's the person's name on Twitter. The boys are bleak said, I'm watching the game and I can't believe what I'm seeing from the Harlequins. Green was not having his best day in attack. Harlequins altogether just struggling to finish with Exeter having one man down. What on earth? I think, to be honest, the boys are bleak. I think, to be honest, it can be more difficult than we might imagine to play against 14 men. Exeter were unbelievably resilient, unbelievably tough. Dave Ewers was magnificent. Armoured magnificent when he came on. Johnny Hill, magnificent. I'm going to say that word again if I have to. They really, really stood up to Queens. And you could argue, I mean, they could very well have won that game. Not argue, you could, they could very well have won that game. And it wouldn't have been an injustice to anybody. So I think Queens weren't quite at it. It's partly the weather, partly because Exeter Chiefs were actually fantastic. So this week, you guys were very keen to comment on certain things uh, on YouTube. Um, a man called um, Compliance Breeds Reliance. Um, looks like not a young man with a white beard could be Piers Corbyn. I mean, I don't want to get political on this, but I really hope it's not Piers Corbyn. Uh, question for next time. Is Spencer and Cipriani a combination we haven't seen much of? Well, it is a combination we haven't seen much of. You can answer that question, Piers. Um, I rate both players and think it would have been a cool dynamic to see. Thanks for the laugh, Flats. A good man. What are you laughing at, by the way? What are you laughing at? There's no jokes here, mate. It's serious business, OK? I mean, we're only halfway through the season, Chief, so we might well see that dynamic again, and I really hope we do. Two very exciting players. A.M. Williams said, Luke Northmore keeps getting better and better. Seems to do an awful lot right and not make many mistakes. Playing with big Andre helps, but I think he might make the England Six Nations squad. Do you know what? I think you might be right. I don't know if he'll make the England squad or not, because it's a reasonably tight squad. Although Eddie Jones has asked to have a couple of extra players in it, as not he, to allow for guys catching COVID and all that sort of stuff. Um, Luke Northmore is a fantastic player and it's a great credit to him that actually Lewis Liner, who is also a fantastic player, doesn't start any, every game, doesn't need to start every game. Northmore for me is the real deal in attack and defence. Alistair Burry, um, Flats looking sharp, what you bench in these days, mate, no one talks about what they bench. If you talk about what you bench, mate, you're a loser, but <clears throat> about 200. Uh, Dave Bacon, Dave Bacon, Dave, is that your real name, Dave? Oh, Dave, that is, I would love to be called. In fact, I might just start calling myself Dave Bacon. Wow, I might get a dog just so I can call it Dave Bacon, a Rottweiler called Dave Bacon. Oh, wow. Uh, being, being Canadian, Dave's Canadian. I'm so tired of North American mainstream sports. I know, right? No interest. And I'm diving into rugby head first. So far, I love what I see and I'm still learning all the rules. Are there any star Canadian players in the premiership I can follow? Well, do you know what, Dave Bacon? There aren't enough, mate. There aren't enough Canadian superstars here, so why don't you come over, lead the charge, be a pioneer. Mate, come over and play. If you're going to dive in head first, bring a gum shield, we'll sort you some boots out. Just play. It's not difficult, mate. We've all done it. Another fantastic weekend's action in the Gallagher Premiership. Uh, we'll see you next time around. Do remember to like, comment, subscribe on this. And actually, there's a little bell notification thing you can tap on. So when the next lowdown lands, it just comes straight to you. If you have anyone go looking for it, it just comes straight to you. See you soon.